Unimog is a range of multi-purpose all-wheel drive medium trucks produced by Daimler and sold under the brand name Mercedes-Benz. Its inventor, Albert Frederick, started developing the Unimog in 1945, originally as an agricultural vehicle, a tractor, but with four wheels of equal size and four-wheel drive. From the beginning, six speeds with a, sp with a speed of approximately 50 kilometers per hour really made this a very multi-versatile vehicle. From the very first models to the newer modern ones, many improvements have been made, but the original drive system concept, that is high ground clearance, robust agricultural grade components, heavy equipment grade four-wheel drive system, on-pavement driving capability, and a multiplicity of PTO attachment opportunities, all of that, the original driveline concept system has not changed since the beginning. Oh, what is PTO, by the way? I ask the same thing. Wikipedia tells us a power takeoff, or PTO, is any of several methods for taking power from a power source, such as a running engine, and transmitting it to an application, such as an attachment or separate machines. This is super common in, tra in tractors for attaching all those thingies for, um, you know, whatever tractors are used for. Uh, but I digress. Back to Unimog. You know that 40-year-old tractor that your farmer uncle has that he still drives around the farm? Yeah, think of a Unimog like that old tractor that never dies, goes anywhere, and now can be used as an actual overland vehicle. I'm absolutely fascinated by them, and today you're in for a real treat. By the way, this movie may be a little long because there's a lot of detail, but I have an Easter egg hidden towards the end, so keep a sharp eye. So you know, that's right here. A lot of it's on here. Okay. Okay, so what do we want to do? I wanted to do a rig walk around. I've been walking yep. by this thing for the last three days. I, I got to know about this thing. It's a Mercedes Unimog, yeah. 1979, okay. built in Germany. I purchased it about 11 years ago. Okay. Um, I brought it, I actually brought it in Switzerland. Okay. And uh, shipped it over here. It's set up to do Africa. Uh, my background is uh, I've done a number of trips over in Africa and around the world. So I set it up as a true co overland vehicle that can do long distance trips. Drive the Globe was a, uh, it was, still is kind of a company that we um, started back in the mid 90s. We've done trips uh, Africa, Arctic Circle, East and West Coast, uh, Canada, Newfoundland, Labrador Highway. In this vehicle? Uh, not in, just, well, okay. this vehicle has done some of them, yep. Okay. How did you get started in all of this? It began, funny enough, I got out of college and had a job, uh, you know, a suit and tie job. I hated it. Uh, and there was a guy in my office that We all said, have those stories. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> this is a weird one. Uh, he, he came to me, he was, you know, in the next cubicle over and he said, hey Mike, uh, you want to go to Africa? I said, uh, okay. And I think at the time I probably wasn't too sure where Africa was. <laughs> And uh, the long and short of it is we went and got our shots and et cetera, et cetera. And we, uh, I sold a car that I had and spent the next year traveling around Africa. And one flew out to Morocco, one way ticket and no plan. We backpacked and got around by train, camel, bus. That's how I got into the vehicle part because when I was in Africa, I saw these, these great trucks that I've never seen before, Land Rovers. Yeah. And I said, wow, when I get home, I gotta buy me one of those, right. you know? So and I still own the truck, by the way. I bought the, <laughs> I bought my original uh, Series 2A 1965 uh, 26 years ago about, and I still have it. Still have it. I took that truck 8,000 miles across Africa. You can't get rid of it. Beat it up. You've got to keep it. Uh, yep, and it yeah. was it was it's off the option. road probably for eight years. It took me to rebuild it after the Africa trip. Right. So I still have it. I've had a lot of different stuff, a lot of different Land Rovers, Jeeps. I had a uh, Land Rover Forward Control 101. So most okay. people don't know what that is. It's a military Land Rover. Similar style to this, it's a cab over. Problem with that truck is, and what I really wanted to do was a uh, South American trip, and it was a uh, uh, 3.5 liter V8 uh, gasoline engine. My experience uh, in Africa showed me that 
really the, the gasoline engines were, were difficult. Like the fuel was so poor, uh, my concern was that truck was not going to be able to make it. The fuel so quality? The is quality poor? is okay. poor, yeah. But diesel fuel is better quality? But diesel Some fuel doesn't matter. The quality okay. of diesel is just is really it's bad in the first place. So okay. Um, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter quite as much. So I ended up uh, selling that vehicle and replacing it with this. This was uh, Mercedes is known their work you know it's a work truck. Um, originally they were um, designed to uh, for the government in Germany to, to have one vehicle per town that could have lots of different things right. uh, uses. So they're workhorses hmm. um, built very heavy duty interesting very little very little issues with it quite frankly right. i mean the big issue with it is obviously it's a little bit big yeah. it's a little heavy um very heavy duty so you need big tools right <laughs>So this thing, I mean, it's it's uh, it, it has a, a V8 diesel, I believe. No, this is a it's an inline six uh, six cylinder turbo diesel. Turbo diesel, and then you, I mean, obviously it's going to have high and low range four wheel drive. Yep. Um, does it have locking differentials or any of these other bells and whistles? Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, it's a, it's essentially a, a gigantic tractor, so it locks. Um, it has uh, six uh, six uh, forward speeds. Um, this has two reverse. Okay. Um, there's different kinds of tra uh, transmissions in, in, the, in various different Unimogs per year. Mercedes was infamous for building lots of different variants. Okay. The, the, the joke always is, is there's no two Unimogs the same. Okay. <laughs> um, but the, um, yeah, it has, uh, it has air actuated uh, lockers. Okay. Um, what makes this vehicle very unique and people like is that it has what they call portal axles. Okay. So portal axles uh, have gear reductions that are actually in the hubs, in the, in the wheels. So um, what that does for you is that the actual axle tubes are set above mid-range on, on the wheel. So if you get down there and look, it gives you a, quite a bit of extra clearance. Talk to me about your tires. What size, what brand? I run um, their 43 inch um, tires, they're Continentals. Okay. Uh, they're essentially, they're fairly readily available tire, the military uses them. So. How does it drive on the highway? Uh, it doesn't drive bad. It's um. What do you do, is it, I mean you do 60, so, 80? So the stock, this vehicle, I think, um, the max speed was about, it was pretty close to probably only 50 miles an hour. Okay. But, like I mentioned before, there was a lot of uh, gear variables, so I've upgraded and changed the uh, gear ratio in the diffs and in the portal axles. Okay. So, it's called, in the Unimog world, it's called super fast axles. Um, my top speed, I believe, is close to about 70 miles an hour now. Okay. Um, I don't drive that way and I don't recommend it um, only because a the tires are gigantic and it's hard to balance right. um, So I came down at uh, 56 58 miles an hour. How many spares do you carry? Uh, tires? Yeah, I have one uh, spare tire in the rear okay. um, And then do you have onboard air? I have on board air, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, the, the Unimogs are set up with um, an air system Okay. Talk to me about suspension. Uh, well, for for a vehicle that's you know in the 70s, it, um, it has a coil sprung suspension. It's a fairly modern suspension, um, which makes it ride nice. What kind of travel? Because I mean, there's a Unimog right well, over yeah, here. Yeah, so that... Unimogs are are famous for their articulation. The frame, it's a you know a ladder frame, is fairly narrow. It has flex. It has a lot of flex. Right. Oh. You're going to lose me, Mr. T. Meyer. It's only 20 degrees. Next thing we see is the twist because this is something very special on the Unimog. You have these two axles, portal axles. axles. That box on the back will be going one direction, the truck's going the other direction. Yeah. Um, so it has, it has. <laughs> something that's potentially dangerous about that, but the articulation and the, the, the the ability to do what the truck does comes more from the flex of the frame okay. uh, and how it's constructed and how they've mounted the cab and the, the rear body on the, the vehicle. Sure. Talk to me about your exterior storage. I mean, you've got a rack up there, you've got tube frame. So I built, so I built the, the, uh, the frame for, or the, uh, you know, the, the cage for 
to a couple of reasons. One, so I could stand on, t on the roof um, and access stuff in the back. Two, to put the solar panels. So we have uh, two solar panels on the roof. Okay. Uh, that essentially compensate for uh, the fridge running all the time. Okay. And yeah. and then yeah, yeah it provides yeah. some Dang brush it. protection yeah. and, and awesome. whatnot. It's obviously not a it's not a, a roll cage. Sure. Uh, it's not going to hold up to something like that. What size are your panels? What are you running? They are. Um, I believe they're both. They're two nineties. This is a twenty four volt vehicle. Okay. What are we looking at? So that's my um, that's my solar controller for the panels on the roof. Okay. Um, you got our solar charge controller yep, here. So I can read out. I got a readout there right now. Twenty-five point two volts. Twenty-four volt vehicle. That's perfect. Uh, you can see that it's charging. I know I can get my readout on what my panels are putting out. So this is a front hitch receiver mount. Yeah. So there's so, so, a basket. Yeah, well, uh, take that's it a off basket. It comes off. Yeah. So I I, I made this. Um, basically, this carries my tools and fluids. Okay. Fluids are dirty. I wanted them out of the vehicle. So I just put a class two receiver hitch on there. So obviously, um, if you're going to do anything extreme off road, you're going to take this off. Right. Because it reduces in the way, your approach angle. So you're going to do. Would something there be scenarios where there's a there's a, you're in the middle of Congo or somewhere and there's a really bad road or ruts or something where you would have it was so bad you'd have to take this off to get through yeah sure yeah you just do but it. this is a you know it's a two person it. operation we just pick it off and and right. move it and then put okay. it back on do you have any um exterior storage on the back or on the top that whole box in the back is storage okay got it so we we custom built that it's all for for camping boxes okay uh it has a 75 gallon water tank so everything opens up all the way through okay so yeah, you just have gobs of space yeah, so if you wanted to build all this out to do something, you could, but it's just storage. Right yeah, now. and I didn't want it the height, so that's why it's not really suitable to, I mean, yeah, I guess in, a, in an emergency or you really wanted to, you could certainly, I could fit back here. I could sleep in there if I had to. Yeah, this is a water, 24 volt uh, marine uh, water pump, uh, filter for the water, uh, propane hookups for the shower unit. On the wall is a uh, instant hot water, uh, propane fired instant hot water heater. Uh, the shower is on the back here. This is the the shower enclosure. So you actually have so a shower. The head. shower is there, but it's 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 largely storage, okay. and it has you know a finished roof that supports the tent that I have on it yeah. for this weekend. All right, so talk to me about lighting. Uh, I swapped out every light on the vehicle with okay. LED. These are military uh, LED headlights. Okay. Um, spots or those are in spots, yep. Um, all the blinkers, everything got switched to LED. Okay. Tell me what you're doing about comms. So I, I'm a pilot, um, okay. and I had the idea years ago to put an aviation communication setup in there. So it's got aviation headset, which through the headset, um, driver and co-driver can can talk not that you can't without it but right um, it's a lot more pleasant I, uh, we have satellite uh, Sirius XM the CB ham radio we can plug the yeah. iPod into it we can play tunes usually our go-to communication format is CB I get you know I usually follow one of the trucker channels or something so yeah. you get the the, the dialogue coming through yeah. like did you see that orange thing driving down yeah. the highway <laughs> what <laughs> I usually was that? So, I know you said this a second ago that armor and protection isn't super relevant, but purpose built. Everything is heavy duty. Everything underneath. There's nothing. There's nothing really uh, susceptible to getting hit. The diff is a lot higher right. than normal. It's, it's over even sitting here right now. It's over 20 inches. So the drive shafts are inside torque tubes. There's no uh, accessibility to anything that's that's moving to get okay. stuck by a stick. Big armor plate on the front to protect uh, oil cooler and uh, the water cooler and everything. So. Talk to me about recovery, because getting stuck is a reality. Getting stuck in a Unimog could potentially be bad, and it goes through my mind every day. This truck has a close to a 24,000 pound winch on the rear, okay. and probably the number one comment that I've had uh, this weekend at Overland Expo is, how come you only have a winch on the rear and there's none in the front? You don't have one on the front. I don't have one on the front. Interesting. If this truck gets stuck, 
trust me when I say you don't want to go forward. Because <laughs> uh, if it gets stuck, it's, it's a pretty it, difficult situation. This truck, fully loaded with equipment, weighs about 12,500 pounds. Yeah, okay. If I get stuck, I want to go back the way I came. You want the, uh, the gadgets and the equipment yeah. uh, to be safe and to use if absolutely necessary. Right. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, if I carry an umbrella, it's not going to rain. So, you know, the winch is there, but, you know, the idea is not to go out and use the winch. I know you guys are thinking what I'm thinking. I want to know what it looks like inside. So this is the front, front cab. Um, you're gonna notice immediately that uh, I'm not tall, so Unimogs, uh, particularly of this vintage, are not good for tall people. It's not the greatest setup for the passenger. Uh, the passenger does not really have uh, a wheel well that goes down, so you kinda have to get used to laying with your feet out. My cab, I have everything set up for me that I can uh, see while I'm driving. I essentially use a phone for my uh, speedometer. Okay. Uh, I'm not, great at, I'm not great at doing metric translation, uh, number one and number two. Uh, it's not that accurate with the, the tires, so okay. um, I, get to, I get accurate reading from that. This is my uh, rear backup cameras. I actually have four cameras on the truck. I have two in the rear and two in the front. Okay. I can, put, I can uh, flip what camera I'm looking at. So if I am in a situation off-road and there's an obstacle potentially in the front of the vehicle, I have a low camera so I can see it. Um, I run GPS on my iPad. I'm, I'm all uh, I'm all Mac-based here, I guess. Yeah, uh, um, but you have, an, you have an Android smartphone. I do. Huh. That's not my phone, it's my phone right here. Oh, so that's um, just another device. That, that's just another device. It was cheaper to get two phones on the plan. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> As we talked about, we got aviation headsets. That, comes. You know, go on here. Um, Here's the motor, by the way. Andrew this here. is the motor. Um, this has a this generate is, a lot of heat in here. Uh, no, not actually too bad. This is there's it's actually dual shelled. So this is an aftermarket product. Okay. Um, that covers the uh, the the engine. Okay. And uh, it's insulated, so it's got double wall insulation. So okay. it's actually not bad. Air conditioning and heating. I'm I'm assuming. Air conditioning is you open the window. Okay. So no actual air conditioning. No air conditioning. Okay. Heat works great. It's got both uh, heater down here and it's got a diesel heater under the seat in the rear. So if you're doing a safari in Africa, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody assumes it's hot in Africa. Is it hot in Africa? It's hot in Africa. Yeah, okay, so you just, um, you just yep, open the I windows. insulated the ceiling. Okay, um, so that helps. It's insulated inside uh, from the top, okay. and I put um, the solar panels are above us, so there's okay. an air gap. Okay. So I don't get heat Directly too much on, from, okay. from above. I've got six, four, four, uh, well, I've got four, six forward speeds um, this lever right here is forward backwards okay. <laughs> so if it's forward you're going forward if it's back you're going reverse okay. um, reverse has reverse works in gear one and two so you actually have what you end up with uh, two reverse speeds okay. one and two forward speed are geared so low one, one I can put it in one and we can we can walk on outside the truck right um, so one and two you don't use under normal driving. So that's what it's, when I say six forward speeds, one and two is so low. Okay. You really start from a stoplight, you're gonna start in third. Okay. So you run it through third, three, four, five, six. This is the actuator, it's air actuated uh, to lock the, uh, the wheels. Got CB, uh, underneath here is the ham radio. Um, we have, this is the aviation headset plug-in, satellite Sirius XM radios up here. This is a, what they call a DOCA, which is basically a crew cab, it's four doors. They're fairly hard to find. Yeah. Uh, I wanted the four door for the same reason that I want a trailer. Uh -huh. When I roll into camp, uh, you know, you go in with uh, a, a multiple vehicles and then right. you want to go out to the restaurant, you end up having to take everybody's truck. Yeah. <laughs> so this this way at least I can fit four people and hopefully we can take less vehicles yeah. to go into town or wherever. Four, four people that are... Shorter than me. Yes. Yeah. Short. Four <laughs> short people. The seats are uh, have a little bit of story behind them. I did custom make the 
the mounts for them underneath here, and they do, they actually go forward, forward and backwards. These are Recaros, uh, funny enough, they traveled 8,000 miles across Africa with me in my Land Rover. Really? And I found out that they were, they were co so comfortable, I decided to swap them out and put them in the Unimog. Huh. Mercedes, a couple years uh, later, uh, came up with a, you know, a couple models where the, the cab was, uh, it's called the square box. Right. Um, mine's rounded, the, the, the later ones are square. Um, those became a little bit bigger. They were a little more better suited for better larger. suited for larger people. Yeah, and the new ones nowadays uh, are, are ginormously tall inside the cab. So I got my switches here. This turns on, you know, cab lighting, LED cab lighting. This switch power uh, turns on um, all my radios, my my satellite stuff. Um, this is for turning on all the power equipment in the rear of the truck. Okay. Shower, hot water shower, the pumps, um, all that stuff is back there. And you know, these flip up, I keep extra stuff in there. This is your quick connect. This is a quick connect for the kitchen setup for outside for okay. the propane and bottle so opener. The nice thing about the mogs is that you can see how they mount this box that we built mounts on four balls okay and you just lift it off just they're just balls and they slide in they sit on it oh so literally i just take these off I'm i just not... unbolt this and lift this thing straight up i'm seeing you now so here's you've got a ball and so you take this bolt out yep and it just and slides up. off. So this part right here Stays. is your is, is part of your mount. frame. Yeah, yeah your your, your actual frame. vehicle infrastructure. Correct. And then this whole thing, you take the bullet, this whole thing, you can use forklift or something. Correct. It comes Yep. Ah. Yep. I actually have jacks. I have four similar to a camper jacks. Yeah, you hook up. And here. I just I just hook them up, I lift the thing up, I drive the truck out. You drive it right out. Yep. Wow. That's that's cool. Hmm. Yep. That's and that super goes to interesting. Sort of, Unimog stands for Universal Motor Garage, which is Universal Farm Implement, sort of in German. Interesting. I might not have been recording that. I'm sorry, Michael. It's all right. Let's do it again. <laughs> we'll do it better the second time. We'll do it better the second time. Michael. Yes. This thing is awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate your time walking us through this. It certainly has a lot of cool factors, but more importantly, it does what you want it to do and what you need it to do. Michael, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you Thanks very so much. much. Appreciate yeah. it. If you like what we're doing, please support us by making sure you're subscribed to our channel. You can, you can subscribe to us by clicking on that little circle of me right there. The second thing you can do is you can shop our merch store. We have all kinds of fun swag like uh, t-shirts and patches and stickers and hats and hoodies and all kinds of crap like that. Plus the patches and stickers, we actually fulfill them ourselves and the kids write a little thank you note in there. So it's kind of fun. They're totally involved in that. I appreciate you watching. Thanks so much and thank you. Thank you, bye.